Welcome back, visual learners. Today, we're going to be going over everything you need to know about the class of loop diuretics from Memory Farm's Top 200 Drugs Made Easy Coloring Book. If you struggle with keeping all the facts about different classes of diuretics straight in your head, I've got you. So if you're ready, let's color and learn. Loop diuretics. Let's start by breaking down the word. This class is called loop diuretics because it works on the loop of Henle. As you can see, the basic shape of a nephron has a loop, and these medications work in that specific area. Diuretics come from a Greek word meaning to urinate or diuresis. These medications increase the kidney's ability to excrete sodium and water through urine. So if you guess what these drugs are used for already, then you're well on your way to becoming a pharmacology ninja. Yep, it is used for fluid overload or in patients who have retained too much water. There are four main drugs in this class, including furosemide, torsemide, bumetanide, and ethacrinic acid. You will see furosemide be prescribed more commonly. Bumetanide and torsemide have great bioavailability and are more potent compared to furosemide. So if furosemide fails, then try bumetanide or torsemide. Fun tip, ethacrinic acid is the only loop diuretic in the US market that doesn't contain a sulfonamide substituent and can be used in patients with a true sulfonamide allergy. All right, moving on, a brand name tip. Lasix brand name hints at its duration of action. Lasix lasts six hours, so therefore you wanna counsel patients to not take this after 4 p.m. to decrease nighttime bathroom trips. The visual anchor for this class of drugs is a loopy hen. Why? Because again, these drugs work at the loop of Henley, and this hen is loopy or dizzy due to the fluid loss, which is a side effect of this medication. Loop diuretics are indicated for the treatment of edema, or in other words, swelling caused by too much fluid trapped in the body's tissues, and this is commonly associated with diseases such as congestive heart failure, liver cirrhosis, or renal disease. Because of their ability to lower blood pressure by inducing sodium and fluid loss, they can also help with hypertension. Some contraindications to keep in mind. Loop diuretics like furosemide, bimetanide, and torsemide are sulfonamide derivatives. So the question is, can we use them in patients with sulfonamide allergies? Well, since the sulfa moiety with sulfa-based diuretics is slightly different than sulfonamide antibiotics, cross-reactivity is very low and not likely to occur. The American College of Allergy states there is no evidence to suggest allergic cross-reactivity between sulfonamide antibiotics and non-antibiotic sulfonamides. The exception is ethacrinic acid, as it is the only loop diuretic that doesn't contain a sulfonamide substituent. Since this class can cause fluid shifts, it's important to monitor fluid and electrolytes as profound loss can occur. Also, it is contraindicated in patients with anuria or when the kidneys are not producing urine as these medications will not work. All right, let's talk mechanisms of action. As I alluded to before, loop diuretics work where again? You got it, it works on the loop of Henle to decrease fluid volume in patients with edema. But how? In the nephron, there's a co-transporter called the sodium potassium 2 chloride pump that's responsible for 25% of sodium reabsorption in the body. But what does that have to do with water? Well, remember, water follows sodium because it likes to keep things in equilibrium. So think water flows where sodium goes. So loop diuretics work by inhibiting this co-transporter in the thick ascending loop of Henle, as you can see with the loopy hen sitting on the co-transporter eggs to block it from reabsorbing sodium and water. So instead of being reabsorbed, sodium water gets excreted out in the urine. Now moving on to side effects. Remember the mnemonic loop of Henle specifically the thick ascending loop of Henle. L is for loss of potassium. This is why you'll see patients be prescribed low doses of potassium supplements when they are taking high doses of loop diuretics. O is for ototoxicity, especially if at high doses or if co-administered with other ototoxic agents. O is also for orthostatic hypotension, so since we're losing fluid, the side effect makes sense. P is for photosensitivity. Counsel patients to use sunscreen or protective clothing when outdoors. H is for hyperglycemia, as it can impair glucose metabolism, leading to increased blood sugars. E is for elevated urate levels, so be cautious in patients with gout. N is for nephritis, which is a rare allergic reaction. L is for loss of other electrolytes besides potassium, such as sodium, magnesium, chloride, and calcium. And last, E is for elevated triglycerides, as LDL cholesterol and triglycerides have been shown to increase with high doses of loop diuretics. Last, some important clinical pearls and counseling points. Again, you wanna counsel your patients to take this medication when? Yep, that's right, in the morning to decrease nighttime awakenings to use the restroom. 
Some important things to monitor include the patient's weight, vital signs such as blood pressure and adequate intake and output, as well as electrolytes such as potassium. Also, you want to counsel your patients to rise slowly from sitting or laying as this medication can cause them to be dizzy due to orthostatic hypotension. Remember our loopy hen? Alright guys, that's it for today. If you found this helpful, click that subscribe button for more. Let me know if you have questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're interested in getting more information from our Top 200 Drugs Made Easy Coloring Book, I'll leave a link to the product below in the description and I'll see you in the next video.